All right, welcome back to Lua for Beginners. So last time I promised we'd go over arguments. So here we are right where we left off. Let's clear this out and start a new function. So let's get let's start a function called greet. So we start off with the word function, just like last time. And then we'll give it the name greet, G-R-E-E-T. Open and close parentheses, go down a couple lines, and then type end. All right, so now we have an empty function called greet. So what we're going to do is this function is just going to greet whatever name that we give it. So let's start off by automatically giving it a name. So it doesn't actually do anything except put out some text. So we're going to print. Hello, Dylan. Just like that. And then remember, we have to call it. This code won't just run. In fact, let me save and show you that nothing happens if we run it. Even though we have code here, we haven't actually called it for it to run. So it's not going to do anything. So we need to call it by calling its name, greet. And doing that, open and close parentheses, just like that. Save your file, run it, and you'll see we have what we put in there. OK. Now what we're going to do is actually work with arguments. So arguments are variables that you give a function for it to use. So right here in our very first line, we see function greet, and then open and close parentheses, which are completely empty right now. What we can do is we can put a variable name between those parentheses. All right, so it's normal variable name. As long as it doesn't start with a number, as long as it doesn't have spaces, it will be OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to put name between these two parentheses. And you'll see that it's actually, if you have um, the code editor that I do, it's a different color. That means that it's detected that you want an argument there. It, it, it's a sign that you're doing it right. So this is a variable that we actually don't need to do an equal sign for. We just give it a name. So if we put an equal sign there and a four, we don't want that. It doesn't really work like a normal variable would. So we just do name, and what we, the way it works is we assume that it did have an equal sign there. Like we just we just use it as if it did. So we can put down a dot dot to put these strings together to concatenate them, and then we'll just use name just like that, right? And if we run that. You'll see that it gives us an error. It says attempt to concatenate a nil value, local name. So what this means is it's, it means you tried to put together a string with something that doesn't exist. And the reason it doesn't exist is because of right here. So when we called the function, now that we are expecting a name, we need to provide one. So in between these parentheses down here, we're going to type double quotes. Dylan, just like that, or your name. And now we're going to run it again after you save. And there you go. You can see it says, hello, Dylan. Now, something interesting about this is the variable name is actually, it gets a copy of a unique variable name to name. So to demonstrate what I mean, because that's kind of confusing, we're going to go up above here. We're going to insert a couple of new lines. And we're actually going to put another variable called name up here. So let's do name equals, and let's give it something different. Let's give it Zach, something like that. OK? So now we have a variable here called name, and we have a variable here called name. So let's see what happens if we run it. You can see that it still says, hello, Dylan. So let's do another thing. Let's print out at the very end here. So after all of this code has run, let's print out name. OK, so now we run that. And you can see 
it runs through this, it says hello Dylan, and then it says Zach. So this name kept the Zach even though this name has Dylan in it. And that's because within these borders, within this close parentheses and this end, this is a totally, it's, it's essentially a different program. So everything in here has its own stuff, including name. So when we give it this name here, it gets its own copy of a name. It has nothing to do with this name. Okay? So what this is called is this is called scope. This function has a different scope from the main program. It's like it's going up a flight of stairs. This scope is one deeper than this scope. And this scope just so happens to have another variable called name. Now here's where it kind of gets a little bit weird. Since this is up a flight of stairs, it gets everything outside of here. So if we give something like name2, remember it doesn't start with a number, so that's actually an okay thing to do. We'll do something like this. If we give it another name, you'll notice it's not in here. So this function won't get a unique name2, it'll get it from outside of here. It'll get it from the main program. So we can do this, print hello, and then name2, just like that. And we'll take this out just so it's not confusing. So what we expect to see here is two outputs. Hello, Zach, and hello, Izzy, just like this. And the reason this works is because of this, is because name is an argument, but name2 is not. So name comes from right here, which comes from right here. But name2 just comes from right here. Now, the weird thing is, is functions can change the values outside of here. So let's do inside the function name2 equals George. Just like that. That will be able to change name2 from Izzy to George. And if we, after we greet, after we run the code to greet, we print out name2. And remember that this is back in the main program. This isn't in the function anymore. You'll see that it did change it. Hello, Dylan. And then you'll see George here. So if you wanted to make it act like it was a argument, you wanted to give it a copy, or you wanted to give it its own unique variable, then we use something called local. So you literally just type local, just like that. Then you give it a variable name. We'll give it name2, just to demonstrate the point. And then you do have to give it a value, because it's not going to get from outside here anymore. It's going to ignore name2 out here, and it's going to make its own name2. So let's give it a third name. I'm actually starting to run out of names here. Let's do Albert. And then if we print out name2, inside the function, oops, sorry, we print it out inside the function and outside the function, we'll get two different things, just like this. See, hello, Dylan, so that comes from right here, as before, we get hello, or Albert, that comes from inside here, and it doesn't leave inside here, it doesn't affect out here anymore, and then we get Izzy, which comes from all the way up here. So that's variables and scope and arguments in Lua. I'll see you in the next tutorial.